<laughs> Taha, Farida, how are you guys doing? Good, thanks. Good, thank you. How are you? Very well, thank you. Very well indeed. Um, thank you so much for agreeing to come on How to Start Up. No problem at all. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, we're so happy to be here. And um, for everyone who doesn't know, uh, Farida is the founder and CEO of Muller Skincare, but she has obviously been joined today by Taha. And Taha, would you mind just, uh, obviously Taha, you're uh, Farida's brother, but would you mind just explaining quickly what your side of the business is? Um, so, yeah, so I have like came on. Um, she started the business, she's done all of the product stuff and I'm starting to do all of the marketing for the business. So uh, creating of the website and now I'm actually driving the product and getting sales because um, that's, you know, you need sales to run a business. Yeah, so I've heard, so I've heard. And uh, <laughs> with with that in mind, uh, let's let's get stuck in straight away. Farida, what, where did the inspiration for Moolah Skincare come from? So I've had like acne from when I was really young like I'd always struggled with um like dry skin and having like pimples and stuff and and I think that was like it was I don't know like that was a really I I really didn't like that like for a long time and I'd spend so much money on um skincare products and none of them would seem to work on me like and I feel like I'm, I'm very sensitive to um chemicals which a lot of skincare products have so then um last literally about last year this time I started I was I just decided I was like I'm gonna buy a bunch of stuff and start making my own like completely natural skincare products so I was experimenting playing around for a good few months like making different things trying them out um and then my skin just started to improve like the texture um I didn't really have acne anymore because I became vegan and that really helped. But um, I did have a, a few other skin concerns that I wanted to address. And then, and I also, being vegan, like, um, I live, like, quite, I eat quite natural foods. And I thought, why is my skincare not natural as well? Like, why is my skincare full of so many chemicals? And that was kind of, like, the drive for me making my skincare. And then... It got to about October time, so I started be making my own skincare products for about six, seven months, trying them out, and then someone just said, like, oh, why don't you turn this into a business, and then I was like, you know what, like, I've got to a good place with my products, I've got a decent, um, like, amount of different products as well, and then I just thought, like, yeah, let me actually, like, turn this into a business, and I just got to work and I was working on that for like literally every single day I'd come home from work and I'd no, nobody would see me like do you <laughs> remember like I was like a ghost like I'd literally just be in my room every single day researching you know how to start a business how to brand and I literally did everything myself just from um, learning things online and a lot of YouTube videos and then, yeah, and then I got my brother on board to help me with the website. And we launched after four, three, four months, about three and a half months uh, from when I decided to turn it into a business. Okay, so talk to me a bit about the launch, because obviously, um, I know you guys launched, I think it was on the 26th of February. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what was the plan around the launch? So, I don't I feel like we did wing it a lot. Yeah, because we did. We are very new to all this, so the whole thing's been a complete learning process for both of us. Um, and I just thought, I don't even know, what was that? So, I mean, um, the one thing is, is that um, we've started from scratch, so we don't have any social presence. Like, we have our personal stuff, um, but in terms of a business, there's no social presence. So, in terms of a launch, uh, what we tried to do is we just tried to get it out to as many people as we could, the people that we knew, and just get them to share it. Um, that was what we found was, like, the best way, like, especially at the start for us, um, with little funds as well, is to, you know, just get the people that we know, um, people that, uh, you know, we we gave samples to initially as well, people that like the products, get them to share it, get our friends and family to share it. And that was sort of what drove at least the first months of sales and just getting um, a brand out there. 
Okay, so how do you guys, obviously I know um, out in the market at the moment there are multiple competitors um, that already offer um, organic, natural, vegan skincare products. What, what's your USP compared to theirs? Um, I feel like, I don't know, there's a lot of brands which do similar things to us, but we have different recipes to them. So like... Um, one product can i don't really know I'm st- <laughs> <laughs> so um i mean yeah th- there's gonna be a lot of different products and you know to me that's a good thing as well if if there's a lot of different kinds of brands that are trying yeah. to do this it, it it means that there's something good about this and i think it's not necessarily just about that specific brand or that specific company it's more about what they're representing which is um just natural health care and not using chemicals that's um what the industry of like healthcare and like beauty and cosmetics is led by is a lot of these big companies which you know um are doing animal uh like they're testing on animals uh their products use a lot of chemicals which aren't actually good for your skin even though it says yeah. on the labeling that and a is. lot of companies claim that they're natural even some of the um like vegan skin companies they claim they're natural but so many of them contain chemicals that you actually go look at the ingredients list and there are so many ingredients that you wouldn't know and the difference between us and them is that like I have uh, created my products to be completely natural so there is no like processing nothing in my products like you'll you'll read the ingredients list and you'll know like oh this is this comes from this like um sea buckthorn oil that comes from the sea buckthorn fruit so just things like that like um like oh god <laughs> i'm really nervous uh yeah so just little things like that like we don't um have any chemicals in our products and also another thing for me was plastic like every skincare product you buy nowadays contains so much plastic even like you look at hand wash like how many bottles of hand wash do you go through a year how many bottles of plastic does that create and every skincare product you buy nowadays is just full of plastic and you can't really get all of the product out of them either. And so I decided to use like tins, aluminium tins and my products, um, you can actually peel the label off and use the tin for something. So if you want to use, um, I don't know, I had, I, had a, I had an idea to do a blog post about this actually, which I am currently writing. So all the little things you can do with tins, like um, just organizing like little little things in your bedroom like hair bubbles or for guys like your jewelry or you know just little things you can put in them uh and that stops things from going just directly to the landfill i think also as well with the reusable uh, materials that we use we will get to a point uh, where logistically we could like have a scheme of just sending back your um your tins and we can refill them for you so we'll have some sort of refill system it's not there at the moment but i'm sure in the the future it's definitely something we have in mind to do there are already a lot of companies that do that already and it's uh, i think it's a really great initiative as well no it's a really good idea baby steps of course i mean um (laughs) Uh, but it's fantastic so since um since launch can i ask how, how many i suppose it's quite difficult to identify specifically how many individual units you've sold so far because you've got three different sizes haven't you you've got your um uh, your travel pack which is four grams you've got your 50 gram and you've got your 100 grams um yeah. have you sold many of the 100 grams so far no we haven't yet we've sold a lot more of the travel size and um the reason that i've wanted to do travel size products is me personally i've spent so much money on products like i've spent like 60 pounds on a cream before and that it's just straight away just clogged up my skin. So the reason um, for doing the little travel size was so people can actually try the product and see like, oh, does this actually work for me? Because a lot of the times um, you have to try quite a few different products and spend quite a lot of money to actually find the perfect product for your skin. So that was the reason for the travel sized um, products. They're like a basically like a little sample and um I think that's why we've sold a lot more of those because people are still trying and Mm -hmm. getting used to um, the type of skincare. And our skincare is quite different to others. It's um, completely oil-based, which a lot of people aren't used to, which takes a little bit of time to get used to. Um, 
because normally like a lot of um creams and stuff you buy they're like 60 to 70 percent water and the actual oil content in them like the natural oils is very low so it's a different type of skincare to get used to so that's why i think we've had a lot more um the smaller size yeah I, we, I mean we we came into it expecting like that like we had planned for that to happen like we understand um that people aren't going to go and buy 100 grams of a skincare uh, product that they haven't used before so um in terms of the larger sizes that's something we'd expect um it's one thing that we want to introduce in our marketing as well is you know once people have bought the samples um or right, how can we get them now to uh, get their attention again and get them to buy the larger packets because um, for them that is more cost effective you know it works out cheaper and it also means they get more product of course no for sure so for sure it's 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 one of those things that we're building towards and we have an understanding that that, that like, like we said that's why we have the smaller samples or travel sizes in place for people just to try and use and uh, you know see how it works for them yeah because at the end of the day like I don't want to be one of those brands that um just sells big sizes and then and then and then our product it doesn't work for somebody and then they're just left there with a big size product that they don't really like and then I, f I find it very wasteful so I think um another way to just reduce waste in general is is selling the smaller size products oh, for people to show. try and then they can move on to the larger sized um products if they like the product we don't want to sell people you know products they don't like <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't think many people want to do that um but with regards to obviously the large size as well it's a really good after sale strategy as well obviously with existing customers once they're on board they'll be able they'll know your product's good and then as you said very rightly to her they'll um they'll go for the more more cost efficient option moving forwards mm -hmm. um with regards I, I just wanted to touch upon branding um because obviously that's very critical to any FMCG non-food brand. Um, from from your perspective, you guys kicked off with, well, your surname, but you dropped an L. Um, talk, talk to me yeah. about um, where the name came from and and the logo as well. That's going to be on you. <laughs> yeah, so um, Moolah actually is a Sanskrit word, which means like the root or the foundation. Um, and... I really like the word. I don't know. I was. I did want to use my surname, and then I found. I was just researching, and I found yeah that Mula means the root or the foundation, and I thought that tied in so nicely with um my brand that um like the root of I think the root of having a uh, good skin is having a good natural um skincare routine. And also, obviously, there's a lot of other things that uh, go with that. But yeah, um, and branding wise, I wanted to have a very clean look to my logo. So I literally just went with um, writing um, in black and white because our products are very, you know, black and white. They're transparent. There's nothing um, like no nasties hidden in there. They're really clean. So that was kind of the idea. It's very simple, but that was the idea behind it. No, it's good. I mean, you kind of give give across this kind of classy appeal as well, um, which um, I, I was going to ask as well. Who is your? Who would you say is your target market? I think our target market is. We don't have. Have we defined? A mm, we don't have one exactly. It's also something that's that's like progressive for us. Yeah. Um, we we believe at the moment it's you know people who are looking for a chemical free skincare like skincare brand that's what people are looking for um this i would i guess it's better to speak more in terms of that kind of industry where it's still very up and coming um a lot of from what we've seen a lot of the larger brands now they're starting to transition into like there, there's more of an appeal for natural skincare routines and just um, uh, animal uh, cruelty free sort of yeah and products, eco friendly eco friendly too. products as well. So that whole industry is something that's on the uprise, and I think we're in a position where we're also trying to leverage that. So it's it's in an industry where it's still up and coming. It's those sorts of people now. It's hard for me to define that like I can't say it's this kind this specific person but it's it's that general appeal that we're trying to uh, reach out to 
No, fair enough. Um, because as I was mentioning, with regards to the logo, it's got that kind of sophisticated, classy appeal that would only be seen on a luxury skincare product. So um, I suppose you are kind of trying to appeal to that section of the market who wants a high quality product at, um, we'll go into pricing in a little bit because it's a mm-hmm. slightly lower price than I've noticed from other ones, but we'll go into that in a little bit. But who wants a high quality product, um, totally chemical free, and obviously it's got that uh, appealing branding to go with it uh and i wanted to say have you guys done any kind of brand value um exercises so far i mean do you know what your brand values are what you guys stand for i mean obviously in terms of that the vegan organic natural aspect as well but has your brand got a personality yet are you still working on that i think that will come over time we've still not really like i've personally struggled with that because um I don't, I don't know. I don't really know what our brand personality yeah, is. Yeah, we, we, we had talked about it. I think just going uh, on those points of being uh, an organic brand, chemical-free um, uh, and uh, eco-friendly, those sorts of things, um, I wouldn't say that's our defi- well, Would we say it's our defining goal? I don't know. It's hard uh, because we haven't defined it. We, we can't say for sure. Um, but it's. I suppose a lot of it is along those lines. Uh, we've already like turned uh not turned down but like, w- like people have asked us in terms of giveaways um like to, if they if we want to participate for example well, this is just an example so we've been uh, asked to be participate in giveaways but other brands don't represent the some of the of, values that yeah. we that we hold so it's like we we won't partake in that because it doesn't uh reflect on some of our uh, own values no that's good and um there's one one of the influencers that you've used um is makeup artist who's also uh vegan uh well, yeah. natural organic but we'll go go into her what was her name uh, janisha i think it was yeah which is really yeah, cool yeah. but we'll talk about influencer marketing a little bit later on um but that's excellent that you guys are already reflecting uh, your beliefs through the brand and obviously just making sure that you don't associate your brand with brands with slightly differing values to yours i mean that's a very important step you've already made so early on in um i suppose your journey which is great um one exercise that i i've done in the past which could help for you uh if you speak to all of your customers and you ask them open questions with regards to the first things that spring to their minds when they think about your brand obviously they'll go for the obvious ones at first like vegan organic natural but say for instance you've got like a mind map you've got the customer in the middle uh, or you've got Mula skincare in the middle and they've said all these you know five or six different things vegan natural etc what you can then go you can go and dig into these little points a little bit further and say okay so when you when you about think about vegan what's the first thing uh, that comes to your mind with regards to Mula skincare then mm. you kind of dig into it a little bit more it's called the means value chain and you keep on digging in until you really get the core core beliefs of um, what con- uh, consumers think about your brand and then obviously you can then in incorporate those into your brand values and then communicate them um, along the way it's not a bad shout yeah that, that's that a makes really a good lot of idea. sense yeah. we'll, look it up we'll yeah look look it up in a bit more detail because the way in which i've explained it is terrible <laughs> so, um <laughs> Moving on quickly uh, to distribution channels, obviously the way in which you're selling the uh, the product, because um, as you guys have rightly said, you do need sales. And how have you gone about that so far? Because I understand you've got obviously your website. I think you're also selling through Instagram as well, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so um, I'll jump to yeah, 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 sure. Okay. So um, all of the sales that we do are done through the website. You know, if even if like we've had like some like family friend or whatever or something we're like just go through the website it makes it a lot more easier for us it gives us more information to track as well so everything's done everything is sold through the website in terms of distribution um we use um shopify so that makes um a lot of things easier i think in terms of uh, like say shipping for example like all of the shipping information is readily there we can just uh we have like a a Royal Mail account that we've connected to it so we can print off labels and just get things sent really really quickly we have all of the packaging at, like already here with us 
where we make the products. So we can literally just put two and two together and send things off literally the same day um, if we have orders come in. So it's mm-hmm. it's actually really efficient, I would say. Yeah, it's really yeah. good Shopify, isn't it? I mean, you can, it just it does a lot of things for you. Um, yeah. You can start businesses which you never thought you could have done. And and with regards to obviously sales, so you do all of your sales through your website at the moment. How are you driving traffic to the website? Um, so at the moment, so the two things that we had really been doing is, is we'd first started pushing content. So we had created a very informative post. That's what it started doing. We haven't done that so much right now, which we kind of want to, to get done more, actually just creating our own content and giving information. And then secondly is influencer marketing. So we've been reaching out to influencers. We have like a giant list that we've been like, created ourselves and yeah. going through. Um, telling people about our brand um, and then also uh, giving them free samples that they can use and they can share with their audience. Um, the combination of the two um, has been working reasonably okay. I think the one thing that's holding us back is just putting more time into things. I think that's probably uh, something that, you know, day to day, like you just forget to do these things, like sending out emails. It seems kind of mundane, but it's really important to get these things done Hmm. what as in customer emails um no sorry um like to influencers Mm -hmm. um like getting like so reaching out to people sending out products i think um it's quite it's been it's been pretty good so far but we haven't done it consistently enough i think to to grow to where we want to get to now, it's all about maintaining those customer touch points. It makes a difference. But again, you are you're essentially crippled by your own time, especially when you've got a nine to five as well. Tal, you have a nine to five as well, presumably. Uh, I'm at uni. I'm you're at uni. Right oh, so not at all. Excellent. Oh, I miss university. <laughs> those are the days. Um, so, with regard, so obviously you're selling through your website and through Instagram. Um, how how's how are you finding sales through Instagram? By the way. Hmm. I think Instagram is quite a very, it's a very visual platform and that helps us. Um, like we've done all the photography ourselves. And um, if you like go, if you look on our Instagram page, all of our posts are quite visually appealing. So I think Instagram helps with that a lot. Um, I would comp- talk more about larger brands. And I think a lot of larger brands, they leverage Instagram um, from their customers content. So um other people will wear like say their clothes use their their face mask for example they'll post their pictures and then the company will essentially recycle that content so instagram is very useful for that for those kinds of mm-hmm. brands it's something that we're again once we once we increase the amount of customers we get then more people will be using it we'll have actually more content from uh, customers to use on our own uh on our own channels. Yeah. Mm. I found I found I found one of your posts I think on um on stories earlier and you can you can impl- you can input a little shopping icon as well, can't you? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's quite cool. I didn't realize you could do that cuz I've never sold anything that from one, Instagram. Um, I don't know if it's specifically with Shopify, but I know I know um when you have Shopify you can connect your products onto Instagram. Um, and it makes it really easy, especially mm. if someone sees a product and they can just literally tap it, see the price of it. Just they can even just buy it straight away. God, so it's really, really cool. Whoever, yeah. whoever, whoever managed to, yeah, whoever managed to organise that relationship between Facebook and Shopify must be the uh, must be quite <laughs> high up in the organisation now, mightn't they? Um, yeah, and even on your iPhone, you can literally go add things into your car, um, and it will just say. Uh, pay with apple pay you double click and your address everything's already saved so it will just get shipped straight to your house like it's that quick it's wow pretty efficient. yeah yeah no that's really good um and, and on that on that front as well so have you obviously it's a little bit too early but have you guys got a plan for um where else you might sell moving forwards obviously once you get your brand out there a little bit have you considered maybe going to some online stores or any bricks and mortars yeah, so we've actually um, contacted a few, and we've uh, we've like we're we're getting ready to be selling on um, different, you know, like the smaller stores that sell um, eco friendly products. We've got a couple of those that we really want to sell in. So um, yeah, we have reached out to those stores. I think uh, we need to just get sorted out, like um, 
manufacturing process so yeah that's the next step but we are really looking forward to doing yeah, that there's the definitely step. quite a few we, um i know um before before all of the the lockdown stuff we had ideas to also um sell at different markets and stores as well that's something that we wanted to look at even um like different conventions as well so that's like one of the routes that we wanted to take uh it's been put on hold for now but it's definitely for obvious reasons yeah. yeah 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 i think i think exhibitions and things like that would be so good to just to talk to people and meet people as well and actually like i, I really like talking about my products so i think that would be a really I really enjoy that to be honest like talking to people about my products talking through them through their skin concerns and things like that so I think I am really looking forward to the lockdown ending and some exhibitions coming you know setting up their dates and stuff so we can look forward to those. No, for sure. Exhibitions are a huge fun, a, a huge amount of fun. I've been to food and drink shows, bike shows, cybersecurity shows, all from all from the company's point of view. And it's just it's just constant blah 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 blah. It's fantastic. I love it. Yeah. And it just goes, yeah, there's just so many people you can speak to. Um, what what kind of um exhibitions can you guys go to? Obviously, I imagine it's all gonna be like is, is there specific skincare ones or which ones have you guys got in mind? So the ones that I really um, liked were the vegan and like vegetarian kind of festivals because I find, um, I think the kind of people there would really be interested and there was, there's not just um, skincare products, there's a lot of other uh, products so we kind of just get to meet people in like the vegan industry as well and they sound really fun as well. I think, <laughs> I think I'd really uh, enjoy like doing one of those. Yeah, for sure. And with regards to the stores, the online stores, you said you've been in contact with a few and also with bricks and mortars. Um, what's been your process of identifying them and then reaching out to them? Um, I think the best thing for me is, um, so I've been using Instagram quite a lot. Um, one thing that works quite well if you're trying to reach out to, say, a particular person, if you have someone in mind, um, so let's say, for example, like you run a podcast, um, your Instagram page will have a podcast. There's usually a button somewhere and it gives you suggested people on there and it will give you uh, people. So you probably end up finding other people like that. So if you have a podcast, usually Instagram suggestions will be more people with podcasts. So you just go on their profile, find their contact details, and then you can just email all of them together. That's what I found yeah. worked really well. Oh, that's awesome. And so you've done, you've done that for like um, bricks and mortars and online stores and you've had conversations. Yeah, well, what, 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 for oh, influence, that's been very helpful influence. because you find, yeah. you find like a certain, um, certain type of influencer with a certain following and then usually you'll find a bunch of yeah. people who are, meet all of those criteria. Amazing. Um, same applause, yeah. Sorry, say that again, mate. So I said the same applies for stores as well. You usually get that same uh, link. And uh, how, how have you, has there been certain wording you've used to approach them or have you been quite, uh, or have you been quite straight to the point? Um, so in terms of emails, I think it's very important to give and not to, to be asking, you know, if you just email someone, just be like, post this on my, like, post, post that, like, share our brand, like, nobody's going to want to do that. So, yeah, you know, you, you have, have to, to give, give to get. yeah, you have yeah. to give some sort of value. Oh, sorry, not from, not from the influencer perspective, but from, simply from mm -hmm. the uh, bricks and mortars and stores like that, yeah. Mm, I think, I think it's very situational. Um, there's some companies which they just, they, they want, they are looking for, for brands um to to promote and sell um i think it depends on how you come across as well it's it's quite hard to say it's quite situational um i know for example with um people that do like what was it called like the buck like the care care packages oh like the monthly skincare yeah. boxes so like people that have those that's something that we're looking at right now they, they, they're, they're looking for brands to work with yeah. so it's it's the conversations that are much easier than trying to get a store to sell your product so i think it is situational i think you just need to be true to your values you also need to um, just seem like a nice uh, company to work with so if yeah. if you're very in, uh, informative if your your communication is good then they'll enjoy working with you i think that 
makes a lot of difference. Um, so I wanted to go back into the pricing strategy that you guys had. Um, obviously, in terms of your competition, there's a, there's a couple out there at the moment that are actually I found them priced a little bit higher than you so far. Uh, there's Sense, which is spelt quite weirdly, S-E-E-N-C-E. Um, and that's about just over 50 percent more expensive than yours. I think uh, the 35 gram tub is 24 quid. Uh, there's also Earth to Face. Both both of them are really annoying names, by the way. I think Moon is going to get And two is spelt T U, like the French U. Uh, yeah, um, and that is literally twice the price of yours for a twenty five gram tub. It's sixty quid. Um, so so in terms of obviously how you guys have decided to price yours, um, why why did you decide to go that direction? So I like I think I feel like I've spent so much money on skincare products, and I didn't want to create another brand which. It's just really overpriced. Like all it is is skincare. Like it shouldn't be that expensive. And um, I did want to go for like slightly more than affordable because it is a very like luxurious product. It's not a cheapy product, but I do think it is very affordable because like the one tub of moisturizer is thirty six pounds, but that will last you for about four to six months. Whereas other uh, moisturizers, that they'll only last about two, three months, if that, if if that's if you use like a little bit. But our moisturizer is very concentrated, and you don't need a lot. So I think um, you do get a, a like good value for money using um, our products, and I think they're priced pretty fair. No, for sure. Um, well, it- do you, do you not do you not fear that you might be pricing yourself out of the market almost? Obviously, if these other brands are a little bit more expensive, then you could pose the risk that other people will be like, well, I'm expecting um, these organic natural skincare uh, brands to be really expensive. And there's that fear that yours might be deemed a slightly lower quality. Um, I don't think so. I think there's, I think like the brands you picked are very expensive, but there are other brands which are organic, which are more on the affordable side. So I think there's, it's a really, um, I don't know, there's a lot of different brands which price very differently and it's mm-hmm. the same thing. So I don't know. Uh, I don't think there's a chance of being outpriced out. I think because um, a lot of people, I've, I've had um, some people react to me saying, that, oh, that is so expensive. And I think like, okay, so but obviously they're probably used to using really cheap like you know five pound moisturizer <laughs> boots own brands yeah. <laughs> yeah i think as well with the more expensive brands it's important to consider that they they put their brand like so because of their brand they, they can afford they can afford charge yeah but is brand. it really worth that money like uh most of the time no because you look at the ingredients like me because i've been making my own skincare now i can look at um like a set of ingredients and think that is really like stupid. Like, how are you charging <laughs> that much? Like, seventy? What were you saying? Seven, double the price. Yeah, one of the brands. Six, sixty quid for twenty-five grams for Earth Two Face. Yeah, so hmm. I'd love to see the ingredients it, in that. They're, they're, it's, probably the majority goes to the packaging. I don't know. It's probably made. It's probably crisp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's another reason why I wanted to keep the packaging so simple because. I feel like it's just a waste of money because a lot of people, I see a lot of brands as well, they have so much packaging, even in their PR packages. Like I like watching them, you know, like YouTubers open like PR packages and stuff like that. And a lot of it is just, it looks really nice. They're going to open it in the video. All of that is going to go straight into the bin. Like even um, I've like, we've like looked into like, you know, like something like a ribbon, like that single-use plastic as well. So even like something as small as a ribbon, like I, I don't want to use ribbon because I think it's just a waste. Like people open it, put it straight in the bin. So I've decided to use like hemp string, which is biodegradable. So you can put it in the bin, but it won't take years and years and years to decay. It will start decaying immediately. So I feel like things like that um, are really important. And even um, like I don't, I don't, I don't put um, 
the skincare bo uh, in boxes. I think that's another waste of like packaging. I think um, talking to influencers as well, like they've been pleasantly <clears throat> surprised with the minimal amount of packaging we use. It's it's almost refreshing to them. That's like. Oh, like you haven't sent all of this unnecessary rubbish. Like mm. we we got some feedback from influencers, and they were like, like a lot of this literally is just unnecessary, and it's a waste. Like, what yeah. are we supposed to do with it? <laughs> like they don't like a lot of times they don't even like having all of this unnecessary stuff in it. So we like to keep it simple. Yeah, because it just fills up your bin, and then you have to take it out. <laughs> <That's> it. <laughs> and who is that? Yeah, so I, I was living in Cambodia last year, um, and it doesn't matter what where you are, what you're buying, more importantly. You can go and buy, I don't know, like a cheap lighter or something, and it'll always come in single-use plastic. It's terrible. Mm. Um, obviously, they're quite far behind the curve. But, um, no, I definitely see where you're coming from with regards to the packaging. Um, I want to, obviously, touch upon influencer marketing now, obviously, in more detail, because, um, obviously, that's a huge part of your strategy. Uh, but before we do... Um, Let's let's talk briefly because you you said um, to her that you're going to start paid ads, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something that we've literally started looking into this, this past week. Okay, and what's been your process around looking into it? Um, a lot of YouTube videos, and it's it's very <laughs> difficult to manoeuvre because like every every Tom Dick and Harry is trying to sell their Shopify course or dropshipping course, so it's been a process of seeing what's what people are doing and um now is going to be the point of actually testing out oh, really? everybody's got their million dollar strategy that they're selling in a 997 course <laughs> 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 well there's um there's brendan kane how he got a million followers in 30 days well it's probably because you had 20 years in the market before that mate that's probably how you got there um it didn't stop me buying the book though didn't read it <laughs> didn't read it though <laughs> but i love that you, you go to the book and you go to purchase it and then you end up just having to pay for posting and packaging then it takes you through an additional 18 steps where they're trying to flog you like sales courses additional books um i don't know his mum's kidneys like all these like everything just everything it's really annoying <laughs> yeah it's it's awful i think um you just have to a good thing to do is to at least what I've been doing is to initially look at a few different people um see what they're actually saying like read try and like you begin the more you do it, you just read through the lines you can be like oh now they're selling me their course I see what they're doing here mm. so it's like reading through the lines and just getting what's actually informative I think a lot of smaller youtubers they tend to be more informative as well um you kind of just have to just go through information and see what you That's can it. Yeah, yeah, because no one's going to be it's able to so give away. Difficult for free online, like it's crazy. Like all the stuff I learned about branding was all free from YouTube. Just, just got to spend the time yeah. to like watch the videos and and you know have like a good bullshit radar <laughs> <laughs> to <laughs> filter out all the you know the not very great advice but there is a lot of good advice out there have you guys got any um go-to youtube videos for paid marketing and branding mm -hmm. i don't know i feel Honestly. like you've watched so many that <laughs> they yeah. all they all blend like, into I one don't, i don't want to also just give someone name out and because i haven't actually done it and, and seen that it works i would rather not give <laughs> fair enough <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that wouldn't that would be a good shout um one thing I, I i thought so i i did a shopify store a few years back and the one of the most critical aspects of my learning was social proofing so demonstrating that your product as well as your company has a certain amount of market viability so for instance by you can do a social proofing campaign where you end up targeting adverts to say india or the philippines so somewhere which isn't the west and speak english and then you end up accumulating a huge number of likes on your facebook page 
Um, I don't mm. think you can really do a likes campaign anymore, unfortunately. I'll double check that. You can that. do post engagement. So you can do post engagement. Number. Yeah, that's absolutely right. You do post engagement. Um, but it was really good when you did a when you were able to send them to a page. Then every time someone else would jump on their on your page, they'd see you have three thousand likes. Like, oh, this must be a really reputable company. You know, I wasn't obviously, but um, then you end up doing it for a product post as well. So you end up targeting you know the same location, and you know you end up targeting India and the Philippines because they're relatively low cost. You know, high populations, yeah. developing countries. Obviously, it can't really classify India as being developing really anymore, um, but it's still very low cost. And then once you build up that audience who've liked all your posts, you then end up creating a lookalike audience and then targeting it to the West. So you've got all these huge number of data points, 3,000 for your Facebook page, 3,000 for your post uh, post likes or whatever it might be. And then Facebook essentially uses all these data points, targets the West, and then ends up finding very similar people who would also like similar pages to yourself. Yeah. And then it makes it makes your adverts more targeted and then a little bit more low cost, a little lower cost as well. Um, but yeah, that's 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 the shittest crash course you'll ever be given in terms of social proof. <laughs> so you're welcome. Take it take it home with you. Um, so with regards to your content strategy on uh, Instagram. That was something you guys were touching upon earlier. You wanted to do something a little bit informative. Uh, how how prescriptive have you been in terms of posting? Um, do you do it every day or what's the process there? Uh, <laughs> I knew the answer to that already. <laughs> the plan right at the moment is to be posting every two days. Um, we have in mind for content, like we want to be getting like, um, like for example, so a customer review that we want to post. So like we have a strategy in place in terms of content. Um, has it been applied to its fullest? <laughs> Not yet. No. <laughs> it's a work in progress. Yeah, it's a work in progress. Definitely. Oh, fair enough. Um, but I think just generally, we want to be consistent. If we're not posting an actual post, we at least, I think we do this every day, but just posting on the story is really easy to do. Yeah. Um, where, like, worst comes, like, you can just share your own post from before. Um, it just shows visually your, your products are on Instagram, so they see it. So that's, like, a, a good little cheat to use <laughs> no for sure um i think i think a really important thing from the point of view of having some kind of content strategy is just having a structure in place um by which i mean knowing what to post um i, I make that sound a little bit easier said than done but um basically if you have some kind of structure so for instance um day one you'll post an inspirational comment um so we'll say monday you fancy doing an inspirational comment um maybe from someone in the industry or day two you'll do an inspirational comment from someone in the industry day three will be a product photo day four maybe you can um what what i what i think would be good from an fmcg point of view maybe like um i don't know if either of you have a gopro but it'd be good to have some kind of um uh, short video of um, i don't know farida mixing together some ingredients for a product yeah. day five you could i don't know do um Know, some kind of photo of you both just posing you know, all, all these little things if, if as long as you know the outlines of what roughly you're going to post every day then you don't have the have to fill that much creativity on the day i was speaking to this girl yeah. um called katrina um she runs a company called tamir swimwear and she was saying that she wasn't very creative and i was like you've come up with designs for a swimwear brand. I mean, surely yeah, you're definitely creative. I think in terms of content strategy, I think people really, they put too much pressure on themselves. I don't know if you guys have found that. Yeah, I've I think definitely, definitely found that, yeah. Like, I feel like, um, you know, the thing you were saying earlier about having like a, your brand having a personality, um, I feel like I overthink every like post, like does that go with everything else I've posted when, I don't know, I feel like I just need, I think we just need to post more things and see what, mm. I don't know, I it's think, a bit yeah. hard, I, I really struggle with it, I struggle with even um, thinking of like what to post sometimes, like there's so many things we can post but I feel like I just overthink it so much and it's not that hard, like... <laughs> It is and it isn't. Um, I think I think from my perspective, I'm quite lucky because obviously I post every day on um, on both on both profiles, but I've kind of I've 
written down out a schedule i know exactly what it is and i'm quite lucky because obviously you know i'm generating content so i can split this up into um so what i'll do is i'll do three different posts um for instance for this interview and then i'll have three uh, and three other posts for the next interview that's really easy <laughs> and all i have to do is post them every day for my other one it's um somewhat the same but i do like a carousel post um a quote and then something else so everything's just split up and i know what i'm going to do every day and i've already got existing um content structures and canva which really helps are you, are you guys using canva or anything like that to create your posts i've used it here and there but we don't really use it for our posts mm. what do you guys use usually um what do you, what, yeah. i use adobe illustrator like oh, i've got enough. um a uh, thing <laughs> like Ooh. a template yeah i know right <laughs> i like it took, took quite a long time can't lie to make um but once you've got the whole template it's so easy to just edit text and then yeah just make a post like i've got the all the content all the template set up now so yeah. but it's the it's the brand personality aspect which kind of um, holds you back a little bit yeah mm, I think so too. yeah i think as as you guys have mostly been you, i mean earlier you said you were winging it and uh, it was a work in progress i think it's the same with the brand personality as well i think as you rightly said it's just a case of just putting as much stuff out there seeing what sticks and eventually the personality will find itself and you know yeah. there's um one of, one of the chaps i was speaking to in episode four which is john beats and he runs a fitness transformation program um uh, directed at women um and he had he, he was he was he was trading under the brand name his own name for about I don't know, six seven eight years um when he started this fitness transformation program and then he took on a branding mentor and they converted it to the strong life club um simply because you know strong was supposed to be strength life was because it was a holistic agency and um the club because they wanted to make it more like a community so there's um you know it does it does come with time and it's an iterative process so i wouldn't i wouldn't be too worried about it for now just just get posting because it's all about getting your brand out there yeah yeah i definitely. think as a brand we're like in our infancy right now we've only been launched two and a half months like there's still so much time like we were lot- looking at like the good thing to look at like we were comparing other brands yeah that was like almost reassuring for us because we were looking at a lot of the brands that were bigger um that they're just like small to medium size but they were you know they started maybe like three years ago five years ago so mm. um and you know they they weren't getting hundreds of likes for examples or hundreds of sales exactly. yeah and even like their content that like i've done that i've scrolled all the way down on certain instagram pages um some of them delete their old stuff but some of them have kept like all their old pictures and it's so cool to see like how they've transformed like over the years and I think that will just be the same for us like obviously like we're not we we, we've never run a business before so we're learning along the way and I I find that the most fun to be Mm -hmm. honest like just learning new things every day uh, we've gained so many skills, yeah. like starting this business. Like I didn't know how to use Adobe Illustrator <laughs> when I first started, but yeah, it's been fun, and I'm really excited for the journey we've got to come. No, you should be. I mean, it's a very lot. You've always got a lot of time. That's the thing. Um, just obviously before we wrap up, I wanted to. I know we've we've touched upon influencer marketing so far, um, but it's a, it's an area that a lot of people I've spoken to struggle with a little bit. Um, but to how you said you've just been reaching out to a lot of influencers influencers via Instagram and I suppose it's just a case of whether if they if they resonate with your brand and especially your your values um then they'll be they'll be likely to jump on board I mean have you have you had to uh, approach any with any 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 payments so far has it all been free Um, we've actually avoided like paying people um I don't see a reason to pay people especially because there's people that are going to do out there for free um and people will charge you like we were getting charged three hundred pounds, five hundred pounds for a post and like a blog post and things like that. And like that that would really add up a lot. You know, I could like we can spend that money elsewhere on I think um doing advertising through Facebook and Instagram. Um and I think that would end up being more cost effective for us. Mm. Um I might be wrong, um, but at least 
for us and for our budget as well because we have a small budget we you know we're paying for things ourselves it's not really feasible for us to do that no yeah. fair enough um and and with regards to uh selecting your influencers obviously yeah as i just said um they have to have the right message for you but is there are there any other parameters you go by to select one mm, i mean for me like it's the way that their page like how they come across um is important um with influencers they're always going to be speaking to you always hear them speaking to you or whatever they're um promoting or whatever they do in life you know you can get a good sense of their personality mm. and i think you can just um instinctively tell if that'll work um one thing that really helps is just the initial like their their first response as well you, you can just get a sense for things as well from their response um if if they're interested in the brand usually if they resonate like you know it, things will go really smoothly but if if it doesn't resonate there's nothing stopping you from saying no as well yeah no fair enough you, you're the one sending the products at the end yeah of the day, we've so. said no to a couple people yeah. that we've just thought like uh, we don't like just i don't know just from their response it's like you don't really seem interested so we're not that interested either yeah <laughs> So, yeah. No, that's fair enough because at the end of the day, they'll be able, I think when they're either taking a photo or doing a little product demonstration, people will be able to to hear the passion in their voice if they're genuinely interested in the product. So it's a, it's a, good, it's a good thing. So it's basically just your natural instinct more than anything that you rely on, isn't it? Yeah, instinct. Um, okay, and just, um, just before we close up, um, after sales, uh, how are you guys going about communicating with like existing car customers? Uh, is there any kind of Moolah community? Uh, no, yeah, we would like to create one. That is something mm-hmm. that we've discussed. And I think um, just keeping in contact with the customers after and asking them how they're finding the products, I think that's really important and seeing how they're getting on. So um, I've done that through Instagram and we're... we're... Yeah, we need to, we, we're working on doing that more formally. I think um, one of the things that you mentioned was social proof. Um, so having reviews on the website is something, it's like the next step that we need to take as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that will go a long way. Yeah, so that's a very much a Shopify skill to do when you're drop shipping, I believe. Mm-hmm. I think just generally in websites as well, isn't it? So um, you can you can even just post that as content. People, I've seen that a lot of brands do that as well. They'll just post a picture of the review and, you know, I think it goes a long way. Oh, for sure. As, as you said, yeah, the social proofing demonstrates some kind of, um, I suppose, uh, reliability and proof that the brand exists and the proof that the brand is of high quality. Um, okay, so... Last but not least, um, at this stage, I usually ask my guests to do two things for me. Um, the first is a pitch test. So what <laughs> I mean by that is that, um, and I think this might be for either an opportunity for you to try your sales skills. Um, basically, I give you 10 to 15, maybe 20 seconds if I'm feeling generous. Some people go as long as a minute sometimes, which is hilarious. But uh, 15 to 20 seconds, quick elevator pitch, just a pitch, mood of skincare, and why people should come to your site. Oh, God. Oh, you can do it. Come on. <laughs> Now you're really putting me on the spot. Uh, I've gone blank, <laughs> honestly. I told you. I told you I'm really bad on the spot. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me think. Nothing's coming. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to think of words, like, and I'm like, this is like the only time, like, when I'm meditating, so many things come into my head, and I'm trying to not have anything in my head, and now, like, it's just empty. Okay, well, I'll have imagine, a go. imagine you're at an exhibition and you're about to sell a product. <laughs> go for it. Uh, <laughs> can you do? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to do it? Oh. Just talk about the brand. Yeah. Okay, and so uh, Moolah what Skincare is-, is a cruelty-free, vegan, organic, and handmade brand. So I actually personally hand-make all the products. 
package them and um we are very low waste we don't like to package things uh, in unnecessary packaging and um, we are working towards becoming fully biodegradable completely recyclable and plastic free as well um and all chemical our, free yeah chemical free all our products are made with lots of love by me <laughs> um, <laughs> That's the best I can do. Right? That'll, that'll do. That'll do. That'll do. That'll um, yeah. <laughs> It'll do. It'll do. There's uh, there's a lot moaning. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. So that was one hell of a pitch. It was one hell of a pitch. Do you want to have a go? <laughs> go on, you have a go. <laughs> you would have a go. Yeah. All right. You'd be way better at this <laughs> than me. That's <laughs> where I mess up. Um, so we're Mule, Mule, I can't even speak now. So we're Mule Skincare. Uh, we are vegan, all natural, uh, chemical free, animal cruelty free, eco friendly uh, skincare brand. Uh, our products are all handmade by this lovely woman over here. Um, our aim is to provide chemical free skincare because it's it is natural. It's a lot better for you. It's a lot healthier for you, um, and that's what we do. It's that was actually not bad at all, mate. <laughs> That's what we do. That's, uh, we need a cash course in marketing. We need a 997 course for Sorry, say that again. So we need a 997 course for elevator pitches. <laughs> Don't worry, I've got a playlist dedicated to it on YouTube. I'll send it to you guys. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, excellent. Uh, Farida, Taha, it was a pleasure to have you both on the show. I really appreciate it. Is there anything else you'd like to say to my one or two listeners out there before we end the show? Check out our website. <laughs> yeah, and check out our Instagram and let us know what you think in the comments. And what's the website? to how to start up please <laughs> i can do my own promotions thanks um <laughs> no remind me where's the um what website do we need to go to to check out your skincare brand so it's www.mulaskincare.co.uk and mula is spelled m-u-l-a perfect guys thank you again and thank you all for listening i really appreciate it and tune back in next time for some real-time advice